Welcome to the Honest Business Podcast. This is the show for ambitious, value-driven business owners who are actively building a business that works for them. Hi, I'm Mae James, and I'm here to make scaling your business easier and more rewarding than ever. Each week, we will dive into simple, sustainable strategy and pragmatic leadership discussion to support you as you take imperfect action on your entrepreneurial journey. If you want to stay ahead, exceed your growth goals, and have a purposeful, thriving business, then keep on listening. Hello and welcome back to the Honest Business Podcast. This is episode 20. Isn't that amazing? We've done 20 episodes. So exciting. Thank you for listening. If you have been on this journey and on board since the beginning, if you've just jumped on, hello, hi. Regardless of where you're at on the Honest Business Podcast situation, I really thank you for being here today and listening. Today's going to be a good one. I feel like everyone is. I know that sounds like I'm tooting my own horn, but I don't care. I feel like the content we provide in the podcast is really, really important for me that it's high value and that it's a long, long form piece of content for you to be able to get every week for free and to deliver this kind of stuff for free really kind of excites me and makes me very happy. And if you do enjoy listening to the podcast, please screenshot and share on Instagram or tag me on LinkedIn or whatever you kind of, wherever you're hanging out at. I'd love for you to to let me know because it really helps to know that someone else is on the other side of it. You obviously see the stats and know people are watching, but it's nice to put a face to who is listening. So today we're going to talk about when you are hearing in your business, the kind of a common thing that you're hearing of like, you're too expensive. The, you know, the thing you're proposing is too much. It's out of my budget. Or, you know, I really want to do this, but financially it's not going to work for me. Those are all, some would say, sales objections. And I don't want to kind of, this episode is not about managing sales. It's not about objections. It's not about objection handling. Um, We will talk a bit about that, but that's not the purpose of this. Um, This episode, I wanted to kind of talk through just some interesting pointers from both sides. And that's where it gets kind of interesting. So I'm going to talk to you about this from you being the seller and you being in your business and doing sales and trying to win clients and that kind of thing and I'm also going to talk to you from it from a side of you buying something and maybe you're in a position where you feel like you have to say oh it's out of my budget or I can't afford it etc and I've got some things to kind of share and say on both that I think will be useful and that you will be able to take away from this episode and kind of implement into your business. So yeah let's dive right in. In terms of hearing this in your business it can be very disheartening and I just want to touch on the mindset side of things where this can be really hard for people to hear I've seen it where people you know hear three times in a row that the stuff's too expensive and therefore they think that the whole business is rubbish and that it's never going to work and that they need to get rid of everything and chuck it out and you know half the price of it or even more than that you know like 90% cut the price of it and I just want to say that that is not the case and it rarely ever is the case um so I really want to kind of preference this whole episode with that however moving on when we talk about this let's get the sales objection kind of stuff out of the way of it sometimes obviously people will say that and sometimes it's you've got to look at it of is it an objection or is it a reason So for many people who say, you know, I can't afford it, it's probably a reason. It's an actual real reason that's a reality for them. And so I, you know, choose to teach sales and the way that I do sales in my business and the way that anybody in my business who helps me with sales does this is that we always come from a human first perspective and always very much of, you know, letting people go at the pace they want to go at and coming to us when they're ready. So for me, if someone says it's out of my budget, I'm kind of like, it's out of their budget, that's fine, it's not, there's no kind of discussion really that much to be honest around it. What is different is if I know someone or I know their business or I know, you know, if if I know that it's an objection in the sense of there's a mindset issue coming up, there's fear, there's insecurity, there's a lot of stuff where they're like, they need to make an investment but they feel like they can't because of x, y and z thing. That is when sometimes I will step in and say hey that's totally fine if that is the reason but I don't think it is and here's why and that only tends to happen with people that I really know and it can be for people buying other things so I just want to preference this as well by saying in my role supporting people sometimes I'm helping people decide where they're going to spend their money on things in the business and where they're going to invest in things and sometimes I'm doing you guys as sales 
objection handling for you, <laughs> potentially, because sometimes I'm convincing and, and telling people why I think it's a good idea for them to spend money in the business, you know, and that's not my money, it's their money in the business. And I'm saying, well, it's going to allow you to do X thing. Or, you know, if they're going to hire a marketing agency, I'm like, well, do this and do that and spend that. And I wouldn't spend it on this. And I think I have a really interesting perspective to add to this conversation, which is why we're doing this episode, because it really, I see it from so many different sides. Um, And what I can say that's really true is, Sometimes people will switch sales and say, people who want to be highly human first and highly ethical will say, there isn't such thing as an objection, everything's a reason. And I totally disagree with that because I myself can use, can't afford something as as an objection and it's not a reason. It's like, yeah, you could make it work. It's just, I'm saying it, oh, I can't afford it because it's easier for me to do that than think about how actually am I going to find the money. So I am on both sides of the coin with this and I very much know that people will use this terminology as just a fact when actually it's not a fact it's like part of their sales process part of their insecurity it's part of what they're scared about and what they're unsure on and what I wanted to kind of really touch on here today is to remind you that people are going through a journey with you when they're buying and therefore when they say this quote of it's too expensive I can't afford it blah 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 you've got to be really nice and normal and I was gonna say human but that's not a word <laughs> but you've got to be human with them you know like people are human beings are very complex but then they're also very simple and people will find the simplest excuse you know so if someone's like yeah I can't afford it that makes everything so much easier for them right because they've just compartmentalized in their head like yeah they can't afford it And sometimes, as I mentioned, that's true. People can't afford it. But there's also a whole crowd of people who can afford it, but they don't want to afford it. And that's fine. We shouldn't be pushing things onto people and convincing people to buy in the sense of like, I am going to convince you to buy this thing. But it's all about us really working out what does it mean to that person. And then that's how we market to them. So that's just a bit of a a kind of side tangent on that and we could talk about sales objections forever and ever and ever because I love talking about you know is it a reason or is it an objection and I think people when we talk about objections people think that that's really like people are saying no and people push past that that's not what a sales objection is in my world a sales objection is about when someone is part way through a buying journey and has come up with a roadblock of why they can't do the thing they want to do If someone gets to the point with me where they're actually telling me an objection, they've already got to me with a desire and they've already got to me with, I really want to do X thing. So for me, it's like, okay, well, how do we let, how can we help them get that thing that they want? And how can we help them make sure they're in that room or container or program or event or whatever it is that we're selling that they want to be in? Because when someone tells me, oh, they can't afford something, that's sad you know like for me I'm like oh that's sad because I want them there and I want them to experience the magic and so you really need to shift how you see you don't have to but I would recommend that you shift the way you see this and shift the way that you perceive it in your business many people are insecure in their businesses and are terrified and therefore as soon as someone says oh I can't afford it they make it all about themselves it's not about you it's not about your business it's about the person saying they can't afford it and you're very selfish if you go down this avenue of believing that it's all about you and your business. It really isn't. And people need to understand that. I always say that. I'm like, don't be selfish. When someone says they can't afford it, it's not a reflection on you and you're not a bad person. It's about them. And that's okay. It doesn't make them a bad person either. It's just, it is what it is, you know? In terms of changing, so that's the sales objective piece. The other bit I want to talk about is you hearing, if you hear hearing this a lot, so if you've got a really solid, decent sales process and you've got a system that you're actually doing sales activity, I'm not talking about you do a bit and then you stop or you do one day and then that's it. Like I'm talking if you're actively speaking to potential clients, reaching out, having inbound leads, whatever you're doing, outbound, inbound, like whatever the way you're selling, but you're having consistency in that activity, but it's not necessarily being successful or it's been successful, but you want to make it even more successful. And one of the key things you're hearing is, it's too expensive, it's out of my budget. 
then you really need to kind of think about what am I going to do about that? So some of it can be your market and some of it can be your sales process. Some of it can be that inevitably there's always an attrition rate that is going to mean that people just can't buy your thing and that's okay. But if you are at a point where you're like, I'm doing all this stuff and I think I'm doing it all right and I can't understand why it's not working, then I would suggest to you the following. So do you need to change your ideal client and who your product or service is for? And I say this because it can serve you for a period of time, but then you may need to move and shift and alter or up level or kind of go deeper into a niche. And I know people hate talking about ideal client and find it such a pain in the backside and I'm kind of similar, so I get it. But I think that when it comes to this sort of thing, it's really key. People want to believe that we're in this like made up amazing world where you know, everybody's going to be able to afford everything. And sadly, that's just not the case. That just doesn't, it doesn't wash, it doesn't exist. And so you really have to decide on what is this thing that you provide for? Who is it for? What is it? Why would they buy it? And why does that person specifically buy it? Not just why would you buy it? Why would the person who is the ideal client buy it? Because that is so, so key in order for this whole thing to work. Now, when I'm saying that, I'm not saying you then have to go and purposely just only serve people who have money. I'm not saying your business has to only serve people who are successful. But what I'm saying is you have to begin or understand to a deep level that business is money and you have to make money. And if you are here and all the time, can't afford it, would love to do it, but it's too much money, you've then got to start asking yourself, and I I hope you understand that I'm talking to the advanced entrepreneur here. Or when I say advanced entrepreneur, I'm talking to someone who is not in the first like six months, isn't just like figuring out what they want to do. I'm talking about someone who's been at this and actually like grafting away because even the most advanced entrepreneurs can get to this stage. So this is a real concept that everybody needs to be listening to because it's really important. And for people to remember that like, okay, You don't have to work with... I'm not saying you've got to work with people who've got money and you've got to only work with those types of people. But what I am saying is we've got to understand that business is money and business is a process of volume. It's a volume game, ultimately. So it's like, what are you going to... Are we going for price? Are we going for volume? Are we going for frequency? And all of those things interplay into a matrix together to get the perfect position, in my opinion, in the market and in the industry that you're in. Now... For some people, they will try and serve a section and proportion of the market who don't have a lot of money. Potentially, if you're doing direct-to-consumer, maybe they don't have a lot of disposable income. Um, You know, B2B, it might be that you're kind of trying to hit someone who's not even got off the ground yet and made their first pound, dollar, whatever. And then, mixed with that, they then try and sell a low-product thing, low-price thing with a low frequency it's just never gonna work and when I say low frequency some people think like yeah well I can still do like a 200 pound offer and just sell 10 of them and that'll be me sorted every month and that makes you two grand but I'm here to tell you like it doesn't really work it just doesn't it does it works for the first six months potentially if you can manage to get 10 sales through every month but a lot of people who are starting out cannot do that And this is what I'm talking about, about every level you get to as an entrepreneur, the bar shifts and the benchmark shifts. And so it doesn't matter where you're at when you're listening to this. I'm just saying that you have to really get clear on at the point you're at, what is a push for you? What is a stretch goal for you? What is a, this is a minimum viable thing that I'm doing. And this is the minimum requirement for my life. Somebody who, you know, is 10 years in and has a really strong funnel, has a really strong marketing situation going on and lots of strategy behind them, then yeah, maybe they can do their 10 sales a month with new clients, but maybe they're going to charge five grand for the same thing and make 50 grand instead of two grand. And I'm not saying everyone should go and charge that amount, but what I'm saying is, is you've got to get clear on frequency versus profit versus revenue versus time and availability because if not your business inevitably long term it just isn't going to work 
And people don't talk about this because people want to live in fairyland and they want to be like, well, you know, if I've got a £25 a month membership and I sell, you know, if I get 2,000 people in there, we're going to be laughing, it's going to be great. And I'm like, yeah, great, but like, how the hell are you planning on getting that amount of people in? Because unless you've got a massive following that's engaged and that are actually like obsessed with you, then I'm going to argue you're going to struggle. So then people are like, well, we'll just go and like get a bank loan, find some funding, do this, do that. I'm like, okay, great. Yeah, it's not gonna, it's not gonna last you very long. It's also not gonna work very long in terms of your attrition rate because of a membership, people always forget it is natural for people to leave. You have to have a solid strategy in place for constant replenishment. There is so many things to think about when you're building your business and when you are structuring your business and designing it. And I just really would encourage you that regardless of whether it's going right or wrong at the minute, I just want you to get clear on what is the money you want to make? How many people do you want to serve? How many people can you serve? What's the profit margin want to look like? Like, what do you want it to be? And move from that place. Because this idea of like, us all trying to save the world and us all trying to like, just be everything to everyone is not really working. And it's making so many small businesses broke. It's making so many small businesses not make any money and their founders feel like they're failing. I'm not saying you can't help small businesses or people starting out or, you know, whatever. But I'm just saying that you have to position your item in the market so clearly. Your messaging has to be so on point. Your delivery has to be exceptional. But the pricing also has to be right. Because if not, it just, it ends up a losing game and you can work your ass off and end up with nothing at the end of it. The other thing to think about with this is how are you selling the thing? How are you actually selling the item that you're talking about? This is really important. Like, the way that you sell is so key for the price point you're selling it at. So if you're hearing, it's too expensive, it's out of my budget a lot it might come down to the fact that you're just selling it in the wrong way or the way that you are positioning it is not hitting with those people. That's really, really key. Great example is like, I can go and spend £5 on a candle or I can go and spend £100, £300 on a candle. It all comes down to positioning, it comes down to messaging, it comes down to brand, it comes down to who are they talking to me and what are they talking to me at. One's selling me you know, five pound, put it in your kitchen and it'll not, it'll take the smell of fish away when you cook fish. Another one's telling me, put it in your bathroom, do you like relax after your long, hard day, really help you with your visualization and with your manifestation for your business and to add value to your life, etc., etc., etc. This isn't an episode about how to sell a candle, but like, there is such a different vibe and that how you sell it to me is really going to change whether I spend the £300 or whether I spend the £5. And I say that because I've done it. So like, and I do it, you know, (laughs) buying candles is a definite weakness and I'm definitely addicted to them and I spend different price points. But the only reason I do that is because of how they're presented to me. It's got nothing to do whether I can actually afford it or not. Obviously, yes, I have to physically have the money, but what hopefully you've read out from this episode is that a lot of people who tell you it's out of their budget and they can't afford it, it's that it's not actually positioned correctly and they're not actually bothered enough about it. You haven't made enough of an impression in them to feel like, God, I need this, I can't not have it. That's the difference, that's the point. You've got to think about it, like how many people actually can't afford something? I'd argue like a lot of people can afford a lot of the things that you're selling. You know, you're not selling a hundred grand, you know, day out. You might be. Great if you are. Definitely contact me if you are. But, you know, if you're listening to this, you're probably not. And so it's about how are you selling something. And when I talk about sales skills, this is what I talk about. This is what I mean. It's not me just going through basic sales strategy and how to do it and who, like, who sells and how people buy. It's like, it's about... What are you actually doing in it? How do we audit that? We can only audit it if you actually do it. So for most people, I can't even audit their sales stuff because they're not even doing any. Or they do a tiny bit and then they get this objection and so they just hide and they don't do it. They're like, oh, someone said it's too expensive. I best not, I best do less. 
if you hear someone say it's too expensive it's out of my budget that means you need to start like ramping up your mark and ramping up talking about it get selling it and talk about it I would love to tell you how many people have said to me they can't afford something and then they buy it not straight away and it's not on a basis of them going and buying you know getting on a credit card and buying it that's not what I'm saying what I'm saying is people who have thought that that's not for me or people like me can't buy that sort of thing or you know I can't buy this item like I won't spend 200 pound a workshop because I only spent 30 pound on a workshop but yet you can totally get them to do it that's not me being manipulative it's not me being unethical it's not me doing anything like that it's just me selling somebody something that they actually need and them understanding and fully internalizing why they're doing something if you cannot do that with the thing you're selling then it's not going to work and this is why I really talk a lot about having one killer offer you don't need loads of offers especially if you're like really getting this like nailed down if you have loads of different offers it gets very complicated for people to fully understand what the message is if you've just got one amazing thing where you're like this is what you need and buy it you can totally help people to see that and kind of show up in themselves in a much easier way so that's really important the other thing you need to think about is that people will say that everything and anything is too much money you have to decide what you're going to put up with and where you draw the line. So for example, you know, I can, we're selling an event and it's 997 at the minute and it might go up. I don't know. We'll see. But it's it's priced at 997. To me, that's an incredible price, you know, to come and spend the day with me one-on-one in person is £8,000. I'm giving people the opportunity and it's only a small group, an opportunity to come and spend the day with me and it's 997, it's £1,000. Some people see that as astronomically high and other people think, yeah, what a bargain. Get in the room with her, want to be in it, know it's going to be killer. Now, whether I priced that at 1,000, if I priced it at 8,000, if I priced it at 100, I still would get the same feedback and probably very similar percentages as well, which is the interesting part. So like, even if I put it at 100 pound, there'd be people who just wouldn't do it the objection would shift it probably would be logistics or time or oh I don't know or this or that or the other but the actual close rate would probably not actually be that much different based on the fact that as human beings we're gonna twist we're gonna complain we're gonna find reasons not to do stuff it's so much easier for the brain to find a reason not to do it than it is to do it It wants to be lazy, it wants to keep us safe, it wants us to just go down a road that we know. We don't want to do like random things. And so you and your business have to have a really strong backbone of what you're going to put up with and what you're not. And that's okay, it's not that you have to be aggressive or rude or weird about it, but you just have to understand truly in yourself of like, okay, they're not for me then. Anyone who says that to me, you know, some people would be like, I'm not going to spend 997 on a on a day I'm like cool don't come your loss my gain someone else can come that's fine and when I say your loss I'm not saying it as if like some passive aggressive thing where I'm like they should have come they're not ready to come and this is the other thing I need to talk about and I was going to talk about when from a from a buyer's example but like people some people are just not ready for your thing so if you're selling it and you're hearing oh it's too expensive it's out of my budget a lot of that time that means that people are just not ready for it so I have people who want to work with me one-on-one and they might wait six months a year even longer and they watch in sidelines and they've said to me you know they say I really want to work with you one-on-one it's not a possibility for me right now and I truly believe it you know for some people that it really isn't financially it's a hell of a lot of money depending on what you you know depending on what you want but I, I really get that but then they do come back and they come back a year later six months later however long and then they're in a place where they're ready but part of that also comes from they find a way of making it work and that's because they've gotten to the person that they know they need to be in order to do the thing they want to do that's a mindset thing it's a huge mindset shift and this is why it's also interconnected but if you start taking people's feedback on face value and saying that is fact and you change your whole business model Guess who's going to be suffering? You. You will suffer for years and years and years. And I've seen it because I help people get out the other side of it. Do not be chained to your audience. Do not be chained to what people are saying. You can always find a different audience. You can always change up and increase your expectation of people. 
that's not rude it's not you being a bad person that is being life and business and you're allowed to want more especially as women we can have and set the boundaries for what we are here for in our lives higher and we're not told that every day and we're actually told the opposite to just be more realistic and be this and be that but I'm here to tell you it's fucking bullshit you can be who you want to be and that's probably going to mean you need to charge x amount of money and that's okay and if someone is not ready to meet you where you're at that's not your problem it really isn't It's the problem of the person, and it's not a problem to them, because it's fine, because they're just in where they're at. But people will come around, and this all comes down to whether or not you're in business for the long term or not. Are you in business for making, you know, a life of this, or are you just in to make some money? And I'm not bashing people who are in to make some money, like, fine, go and make your money. But if you are truly in this and have a really strong mission and a vision and a brand that you're like, no, this is why we're here and we're going to be here for years and years and years, it shouldn't really matter to you if people are saying it's too expensive, it's out of budget. Because you should be able and your emotional intelligence will become, you will learn that through your leadership to a point where you feel very confident of like, oh, that's okay. They're just not there yet. They're not ready for that. They, they're they not in the same space that I'm in and that's okay. And, you know, one day they might be and they might want to come. And if they do, I'll be here for them and I'll be ready to support them. That's the kind of vibe you have to get to in order for this to not become so emotional and so attached and so, like, heavy. Because if you let this take over your emotions, it will ruin your business. Because I see it happen. It, you can't let it ruin your business. But because it gets so emotional and so personal, or you feel like it does anyway, it doesn't actually, but it feels like it in the moment, it becomes very tricky to navigate. Next thing. Really encourage you to look for opportunities when we're talking about do you need to change your message and do you need to change your ideal client so like if you're hearing it's too expensive without my budget and before I said to you right well maybe you need to look at who you're actually speaking to look for opportunities a lot of industry you know I'm not someone who particularly believes that there's gaps in the market I think god you know we're about refinement now we're about innovation I don't think there's many gaps in many markets. That's fine. The, what there are is opportunities. There's opportunities to make a hell of a lot of money. There's opportunities to solve problems in a better, more efficient way. There are opportunities to be a better person and a better player in business. And what I'm suggesting to you to do is to start looking for those opportunities and start seeing them and start living them up and kind of really relating yourself in getting inside of them and getting into the skin of being like, yeah, like this totally makes sense like this is what I'm here for and I really would encourage you to grasp the opportunities and run with them because that can be the start of your really kind of you know success if you want to call it that next thing get clear on your offer I know I talk about this all the time but get clear on your offer and what the end result is it needs to be so so clear it can't be up for interpretation it can't be like it might be this it might be that you really want to give people a solid one. Of course, you can have many other things that might happen because of it, but you want to kind of have a clear what the end result is and then be really clear on what the offer is. What are the logistics? What is the purpose? What's going on? How does it work? All that kind of bump you need to have really clear in your head. So, so important. Because if not, people will say it's too expensive. Like, if I come and say to you, like, come and spend a day with me and pay me a grand, you're going to be like, why the fuck would I do that? Not interested. Like, sounds dreadful. But if I'm very clear to you and explain, and I'm not going to on this episode because we'll be here for ages, but, you know, if I went through and explained it and explained why we do certain things and how it works and what happens and blah, 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 you're going to be like, oh, sounds amazing I'm there I want to do it like get me on board when can I cut you know people get so interested but that's about being really clear on your offer if I just said come and spend the day with me you'd be like "Mm, don't really get that at that price point I mean you know at other price points you can say that so you've got to get really sort of solid in this for yourself the other thing and kind of leading on from that is what is it that you're actually offering people from your offer so when people say it's too expensive it's out of my budget a lot of the time they don't actually understand why it's valuable enough to them like in order for people to part with the cash especially this day and age they need to understand like okay this is going to mean that I can do x in my life or this is going to make me feel x way 
or this is going to give me X thing. Now, typically, that's going to mean more time or less stress or more money or it's going to be, you know, a smoother situation or freedom. You're going to, you got to kind of pick something. Now, there might be multiple things, but you need to kind of have something because if it's just a meh, like, doesn't really have a point, then you're going to struggle to sell it, especially if it is of a, you know, more expensive nature because people won't understand it. And so getting really clear on what is the point of it because it allows you to do X thing is very, very important. Do not skip on that point. That is what I wanted to talk to you about from a seller's perspective. So from you being a seller, building your business, trying to get clients, that's something I want to talk to you about. The next part of this episode, part two, is about you being a buyer and you saying this. And, you know, all of us have said this. I say it. Some things I can't afford. Some things are out of my budget, even though I really want to do them. And they just are out of my budget because I don't have the money. It's also like, I want to go and buy a really nice handbag, but it's just not, it's not in my remit because there's that many other things, you know? Like, it's, <laughs> it's like you can't, sometimes you just can't afford something because you can't afford it. But there's also a whole other side to this that we're going to go into because it's not always the case. So... When you, let's just frame this moment, let's just have a breather and then just kind of switch headspaces. So we've talked about seller, now we're moving on to being a buyer. Let's just think about something that you really want and why you want it and what the justification is for the business. So let's just think about it from a business perspective because if you listen to this, you probably have a business. So, you know, maybe you want to hire an agency for something. Maybe you want to hire a coach. Maybe you want to join some mastermind thing. Maybe you want to spend a load of money on some brand strategy, like, I don't know, some tech consultancy. Maybe you need to go and have like a full redo over with a lawyer and that's going to cost you a lump of money. Like whatever it is, let's just picture something in your head. Part of you having this whole experience of building a business is going to come down to you wanting something. So we all want something somewhere along the line in order for us to be motivated to do something, you know, intrinsically it's like what what do we actually want? And that's not always money for people, you know, you might have loads of money, so you might be, you know, millionaire, multi-millionaire, billionaire, but you do it for a different reason and that could be many, I'm not going to start listing them. But one thing that comes up if you are saying this is out of my budget, or you're saying, I can't afford this, you have to work out, are you just getting in your own way? Are you just protecting yourself? Are you protecting yourself from fear? I've done this before with investments, like, I've done it numerous times where I'm like, I can't afford it, but then actually I can afford it. I can afford it. I just doesn't look like it. You know, in my bank account, that amount of money is not in my bank account. But actually, that doesn't mean anything because many of us as entrepreneurs have got stuff all over the shop and, you know, our money gets very combined together a lot of the time for people and it gets quite confusing of like how much money do you actually even have you know sometimes I talk to clients a lot where people will say like I'll spend money in the business and it'll just I'll, I'll let it flow out so easily but then when it comes to personal I really struggle now obviously if you're buying something for your business it, it often gets a lot easier because you feel like well it's a tax deductible etc etc but if you're buying something for yourself it, it can be a bit like oh what what is the the pull here but you need to think about getting out of your own way and getting out like what is what what do you why you say no to yourself what are you stopping yourself for like what exactly is it and if it's risk and if it's fever of not having enough and having this idea that you've got to save everything that's a whole situation that you have to deal with because that never normally really ends well if you just kind of keep hoarding money people end up in a really strange situation with that but also working out what your priorities are of like okay well If you're not going to spend money on your business, are you happy with what the outcome of that's going to be? Most people aren't. Most people want everything and are not prepared to compromise on anything. And whilst in business, I always say don't compromise from like a business perspective in terms of like you're hiring and you're this and you're that. I think as entrepreneurs, we always compromise, you know, you have to with some degree or, you know, if you don't like the word compromise, sacrifice, if you don't like the word sacrifice, you know, you've just got to change something somewhere often. And for many of us, that's, you know, watching TV or, you know, doing other things. It doesn't have to be about money. But you have to get really clear on what the priority is. 
in order for you to then work out and allow yourself to also accept what the result is. Because I think that gets very lost sometimes. People get very confused of like, I'm not going to buy this thing, but I still expect this result. I'm going to spend half the money with this company that I really wanted to spend X amount with, and I'm still going to expect the same result. You can't expect the same result. It's not going to happen. People are price things in certain ways for certain reasons. It's like me, for example. You know, my business has things that are a range of different price points and that's purposeful, but it also comes with the understanding of X thing's only going to get you so far and then you might have to buy Y thing. I'm not being a scammer there. I'm not being rude. I'm not being unethical. I'm just, it's life, you know? You can't, you don't go and buy something and think it's going to last you the rest of time if it only costs you a pound from some shop. Like, it's the same thing. You've got to be really clear with yourself of like, okay, if you're not buying this thing, then what do you actually need? And that's really important to get clear on. The next point in this is quite a big one. And it's about you having to decide to make your business about making money and not impact. And I know this will trigger people. I know you might not like that. I know you might not be saying that. And you might be like, that doesn't feel good to me. I don't really care if I'm honest with you. Like, The top and bottom of it is if you are running a business and you're not running a charity, you're not running enough for profit, you're not running a social enterprise, you're not running X, Y, and Z thing. If you are running a business, it needs to be about money. Yes, you have to be, you know, should be a good person. Yes, you should want to do great things in the world. But ultimately, it's got to come down to money. There's far too many people who are like in la-la land about the fact that the business is supposed to make money. Like, it's supposed to make money. It, it's not just a hobby. So like you have to get clear on if you are seeing this as an impact mission, then I'm probably going to bet that you'll probably say, I can't afford this, can't afford that, can't do, can't do this. Or, you know, you, you want to help people. And so it's like, yeah, I'm going to pay £25 instead of paying five grand for something. Like it's just on different levels and you've got to get over yourself with it. Like, I'm sorry, but like you just do. You know, if you've got shitloads of money and you can just do whatever you want, great. You know, you go for it. Like anyone who's made a really good living for themselves and, you know, are in a situation of privilege or whatever, perfect. You go and do whatever you need to do impact-wise because you should do. And the billionaires of the world should be doing that, 100%. But you sat listening to this, if you, you know, in your normal life, you don't have to have this like heavy feeling the world that you have to change the world and you have to like do this and do that and give the world everything you've got like you really don't have to and I think as women we feel such a heavy pull to this we feel like oh my goodness like we want to help everyone and look after everyone and really we care deeply and you might be listening to this thinking well you clearly don't (laughs) you might might, if you don't know me you might think oh she's an absolute bitch like wow she doesn't care if you know me, you also know that that is not the case at all. I am such an impact-driven person, but I'm also a realist, and I'm also very, very clear of, like, you have got to protect yourself, and in order to protect yourself, you need to build financial stability, and in order to build financial stability, you have got to make money, and then not just that, you've then got to make profit, but making profit's a different thing we can come to. I just even think about, like, for a lot of people, it's about actually getting some money in the door and making revenue, you have to get this sorted out because financial, you know, independence and wealth is then where your impact can really come from. And I see this mixed up all the time. Yes, you can do it this way, but I'm just saying, if you're here listening to this podcast because you're interested in me and my advice, then I'm going to turn around and say to you, like, focus on yourself first, making some money, then go and change the world. Because if you have got, like, a lot of money sat in a bank account, then you can make a hell of a lot more impact than you can if you don't. And again, I know that triggers people. I know people don't like that. And I'm not saying that it's impossible. I'm just saying that if you are running a business and you've chosen to run a business, you have to make it that way. Do not make it half business, half charity. If you want to start a charity, start a charity. If you want to start a not-for-profit a organization, a social enterprise, or this, that, and the other, great, do it, I love it, you know, charity work's really important, charities do incredible things, all I'm saying is, is a lot of people are, like, trying to do both in a business that's supposed to make profit, and it doesn't work, 
like just get clear on what you want and if that means you need a business and a charity have them and have them separate because you have to learn how to make money you really really do because even in your charity you gotta make money that's just how it rolls and so being really really clear on yourself of like I don't have to save the world I don't have to be this martyr of like how amazing I am because I feel guilty for making money. Women have not made money for so, so long and so many centuries that we deserve to make all the fucking money we can. So never feel, like I never feel ever, ever, ever guilty for making money. I just don't. I'm like, yeah, I'm bloody about time. I need it. Like my ancestors need it, you know, like whoever has come before me, like what have they gone through and not had? So yeah, I'm gonna have it, I'm gonna take it. And I'd really encourage you all to kind of lean into that mindset in some way if you would all resonate because it's really a serious issue of business owners treating things like hobbies and not actually making any money and just being so obsessed with how much impact they're making. It just doesn't cut it. The other thing to say, and again this is going to trigger people, is you can decide to be somebody who can afford things. And this is something I made a decision for a while ago. So a number of years ago, I just thought, well, hang on a minute. Why do I just say, oh, I can't afford it? Why can't I just start saying, yeah, do you know what? I'm going to be someone who can afford things. Now, does that mean that I can go and buy a new car today? And like spend a hundred grand on like, you know, some fancy car? No. Does it mean that I can say yes to every single thing I want to do in my life? No. But what it does mean is it's a complete mindset shift of how I approach business and life. Because if I start coming to things that I can afford whatever I want and if there is something I can't, I find ways around it and like, how can I? But it's such a different place to be coming from than no, I can't afford it and always looking for the cheapest thing. If you always look for the cheapest thing, then like, it's really hard to like, get out of that. And I know it because I did it myself, you know, that, that, (laughs) that used to be me. And it's just not a fun place to be at. But one thing I found is that a lot of this doesn't actually come down to the money in your bag. It comes to your head and what you believe to be true and your belief system and your values and how you see the world. That stuff has got, you know, that is not charged. You can access that and you can access that development without a cost. This is a free podcast you're listening to. And one of the reasons that I'm so passionate about doing it is because of this, because I want to make an impact and because I really, really believe in it. But I also believe that like there's huge amounts of stuff that we need to do that do involve money. So the question is, is are you going to decide to be someone who can afford it? I'd love to know. Like, are you just going to come into situations of like, yeah, I can afford it. I'm going to find a way to. Or, you know, if you can't afford something, you're like, yeah, do you know what? in X amount of time, I probably will afford it. That is such a different place to play and be and operate from than a, I can't afford anything, I've got no money, I'm skinned, this is shit, it's never going to change, this is my family history, this is how it goes, social mobility is impossible. It's just a different way of life, right? And it's just a different approach to business. And as I said, like, I just probably wouldn't have gone anywhere in business if I decided to stick with this narrative because I just wouldn't. I'd think, well, what was the point? Nothing's ever going to happen. When the opposite is true, the opposite has been proven to me in front of my own eyes, from the work I've done myself, from my effort. So, like, really important for you to make that decision. It's a life-changing decision. On this podcast right now, you have a decision to make and you can really, like, change the trajectory of your life over a period of years from that decision. Similarly to that, the next point is about changing the game you are playing. A lot of this stuff I've talked about today is triggering for the person who is not in the place of hearing it. And if you, you know, you might not have even got this far through because you just switched it off and thought what an absolute twat she is. But if you're still here, great. And I want you to think about what is the game you're playing in? What are the circles you're in? Who are you kind of operating from? What do you believe to be true? That all is going to come down to how often you hear this idea of it's out of my budget, I can't afford it. You have to, have to, have to get clear on who do you want to, who do you want to run with? And that's not about you creating cliques and circles. It's it's not even about actual physical people. (laughs) It's about concepts in your head. And it's about what are you consuming 
on a mass level and a micro level every single day. Where is it going? Where's your attention? What are you giving your time and space and energy to? And to lead on to that, the final point I want to leave you with is the idea of raising your own prices and standards for your life. So from a practical perspective, if you're in business, do you need to raise your own pricing? Probably yes. I'm going to probably say yes. Or can you charge more for what you do? Yes, if you market it correctly and if you offer it and package it in a right way and you deliver an exceptional standard, then yeah. What I often find is that people will deny themselves from increasing their pricing because they don't want to actually accept that they can change. And it's very comfortable to be in these funny circles of saying, I can't afford things. It's very easy for me to sit on here and say, you need to decide that you're going to be someone who can afford it. That's a huge shift for a lot of people. You're really peeling back a lot of shit that you've gone through in your life to get to that point. And so, you know, raising your own pricing, prices and pricing strategy is very like, on paper it can be simple. The reality of it can be hard. It's why I help people with it. You know, we have um, things in place for people to come and buy. If you want to come and just have a pricing strategy with me, you can now pay for that where you can come and just get a pricing strategy and I'll write you one and we'll talk through it and we're going to, you know, you work out how you're going to implement it and we have it all written for you and you go off and do it. That's an offer and it's there because on paper, raising your pricing sounds easy. In reality, it gets very hard because human beings are involved. So when we talk about raising standards for your life, get really clear on that. What does that mean for you? Who are you spending your time with? Just because they're your family, do you need to be with them? I don't know. Question it. I'm not saying get rid of your family. I'm just saying you need to protect yourself. And what's good for you and what isn't? And how much time do you want to devote to each thing? Raising the standard in your life can transform your life. And if you're not happy with where you are right now, then like, why are you just sat there not doing anything about it or feeling like you are doing stuff but you're not actually doing anything that's needle moving? That's really key, you know? I love that you're listening to this podcast but if you've been listening to podcasts for the last six hours and you've done absolutely nothing and you're just sat there staring into the wall then like, you know, it's not really going to help you. Actually decide to raise the standard of your life and then meet your action at that point. Meet the risk you're willing to take, the person you're becoming meet them at the point you want because if the life you want and the life you have are so vastly apart which many for many of us they are right like I'm not naive to that I'm really lucky that I live somewhat of my dream life every single day and that is such a privilege and I feel so lucky but that has been a journey that has been really hard for me to do and there's been things that I've had to go through and deal with and kind of allow myself to even think about that wouldn't have happened years ago before but it's worth the work. It's worth the journey. It's not easy. But in terms of a longer term years view, five, 10 year view, then like, why wouldn't you do it? Raising the standard of your life is not about the immediate impact. It's not about what's going to happen today, tomorrow, next week or next year. It's about what is going to happen in five to 10 years time for you. And if you know me, you know that I'm all about sustainability, sustainable growth, sustainable business. What is sustainable to your life? And up-leveling the standards in your life is a possibility. And it's an obligation, I'd argue, for some people. Like, it's an obligation for you to be happy and live the dream. It's really important. That is my thoughts on today's episode. It's been a long one. It's episode 20. I hope in this you have taken something from it. And you feel something from this episode. There's many avenues we could go down. I feel like there's more to say on this, but I don't want to kind of... I think what we've said is really powerful and impactful and I don't want to remove that and dilute it through just adding more and more. So thank you for listening. I hope you have a fantastic week. I'll be back next week in your ears with a new episode. Take care. Speak to you soon. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Honest Business Podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure that you are subscribed. And if you'd like to support the podcast, please share it with others and leave a rating and review. To catch up with all the latest from me, you can follow me on Instagram at may.james underscore, where I share the raw, uncut, behind the scenes reality of what running multiple businesses every day truly looks like. 
As always, links and any resources that were mentioned in the episode will be in the show notes below. That's all for this episode, and I look forward to seeing you next time.